Another edition of Blooms for You. Thank you for being here. I appreciate that you clicked on the video. This is Dendrobium hibiki, and Dendrobium hibiki blooms for everybody that's not mentioned in this video today. First of all, I'd like to give a shout out to the Orchid Ninjas. Look at Lady Chatterley. Isn't this madness? Oh my goodness, she blooms for all of you. She is my orchid for the Orchid Ninjas, if you don't know what that is. That is what members on my channel are called, Orchid Ninjas. And my Phalaenopsis Cornuserbi variety Chatterley Day is the one that brings a very big smile to my face because of the cheeky looking blooms and the McLean's bright white smile that the lip seems to have. <laughs> She has three spikes, two of which were older, one of them has branched, and I have a third spike of the season, also in bloom, not just blooming, but with buds coming. This is the best blooming I have had from this orchid since she arrived in my collection. And because she brings such a smile on my face and the way the orchid ninjas bring a smile on my face, Lady Chatterley, as I like to call her, blooms always for the orchid ninjas when she is in bloom and when not i make sure that i will not lose this orchid <laughs> she means a lot to me just like you orchid ninjas do so thank you for your support on my channel orchid ninjas you are very much appreciated dendrobium hibiki is still looking marvelous though not to throw shade at this orchid maybe a little psychedelic but do not adjust your screen <laughs> unless you want to tone it down a little bit but yeah the corner of the east side of the patio still has some sun on it and my goodness put hibiki in the sun and it jumps out at you <laughs> squint if you must i have had some gorgeous orchids in bloom clips that i have taken when i managed to get them on time i have a dedication list to go through and boy are we going to be knocking some names off the list on this episode so i appreciate everybody who is not named here today who has still watched the video, know that Hibiki is blooming for you as a thank you for your support on my channel, even if you're not mentioned here today. Now, we have a long list. We have plenty of blooms. Stop the jibber jabber. Let's go and have a look, see what has bloomed and whose names have come up. Panarico Prismatocarpa disappoints with 27 blooms. <clears throat> Yes. I was disappointed when at first I counted 29 blooms, but I've counted and counted again and again, and I keep coming up with 27. So, oops, big mistake. What a disappointment, but what a beautiful spike. I am being facetious, of course, because this is more than double the blooms I had in 2021. So, before I get into the orchid and get really close up to the blooms, let me say thank you to DLQ, Ju Young, Dolce Janelle, Rick Hose, Vicky Round to It, Megan Morisot, Janice Martinez Davis, Gavin Griffin, Reagan, Chandra Prasad, Katarina Loban, Lindsay Rusk, and Big Tomato. To all of you, my Panarica Prismato Carpa, she blooms for you as a massive, massive thank you for your support on my channel massive spike massive supporters you're awesome i appreciate having you thank you so very very much now let's get a little bit closer because wow when it comes to exotic <laughs> when it comes to thinking orchid blooms without thinking cat clear this is the shape of bloom that i love it's so brassavola like and then the lip has like an arrow shape to it now, they might not be as striking when looking at them from afar, but the closer you get, the more detail you get into. Ah, oh, it's just gorgeous. And thankfully, the spike in itself is strong enough that it isn't a pendant spike because the presentation just works beautifully. And there's something else I noticed about this orchid this year that for me is a first, or maybe last year being a first time bloomer, I didn't pick up on it. No matter how you position the spike, the blooms open evenly around the spike in a circular fashion. So it's not the direction of light that is influencing where the blooms are facing. Fantastic. Making the whole display, no matter what side you're looking at it from, a pleasure. Of course, when you have it on a shelf, you kind of miss out on the 360 degree visual, but the presentation is gorgeous no matter what angle you look at it from. 
This orchid is a fantastic centerpiece, I would say, for any kind of patio with a center table, just so long as that table is not eventually in direct sun so as not to scorch the leaves. But it is very rare that you get a spike that blooms, and the blooms aren't exactly facing the light. They're not upside down and askew. They're all beautifully presented upright in a 360 degree fashion. That never occurred to me last year. And this year, well, I came to realize something new about this gorgeous orchid. She is not fragrant by no means, but the blooms last for a super long time. She's a little bit late this year in blooming as well. So I'm expecting an even longer time period for her blooms to be open. Last year she was in bloom for me early August and she continued to bloom looking pristine all the way through to mid-September, end of September. At the time of filming this, we are in the first week of September and she's been open for about two weeks now. I say open, you can see that some blooms, the sepals are still attached at the base, but they will pop open eventually. But that is also credit to how long lasting they are. They take forever to actually open. They will never ever present themselves super flat. There's always a little bit of a cup shape to them. And there's no rhyme or reason as to which blooms open first. It's not like the bottom opens and works its way up to the top of the spike because some of the bottom blooms are still closed. The middle blooms are all the way open as are the top. So the whole makeup and structure of the spike is just incredible. It's not even supported in any way, shape or form. And all of those details that I include in my orchid bloom preference list. The orchid herself is already starting on a new growth. That is another first for me. We'll see how that goes. It's right up against the edge of the pot and um, yeah, a repot will be due probably around the nasty time of year, which would be February, March. Huh. We shall see. Anyway, thank you so, so much for your support on my channel. This spike and all its blooms are dedicated to DLQ, Ju Young, Dolce Janelle, Rick Hose, Vicky Round To It, Megan Morisot, Janice Martinez Davis, Gavin Griffin, Reagan, Chandra Prasad, Katarina Loban, Lindsay Rusk, and Big Tomato. I hope you're all doing well in your part of the world. And please, please know that you are very, very much appreciated. I have two blooms that I call the daisies of the orchid world. This is Lelia Regina and we are very, very zoomed in because I wanted to say thank you so much to Background Soothing and Marion for your support on my channel, trying to get into the detail of the bloom in real time with just a slight breeze going. Thank you very much because <laughs> any little breeze and this little spike goes everywhere and it becomes very difficult to film. But there she is, the whole orchid. She's not a big girl, <laughs> but she's got a big heart. I have two leads going on here. Unfortunately, this lead decided not to bloom for us this year. We have the back lead in bloom. Oh, <laughs> I'm sorry. I can't help it. Rapiculous Lelia and I, yeah. Not a very showy bloom, but oh my goodness. The detail, the cuteness, the pristine white, the crystalline effect, all that good stuff that is so, so difficult to document. It just warms my heart. These guys are so cute and I'm super lucky that she also is growing back into the pot as opposed to continuing in the diagonal line that I put her in because I don't have to bother with repotting for at least another year or two years depending where she shoots out next. My affinity with Rapiculus Lelius is well documented on my channel if you didn't know. I am so into these little orchids that I was on a quest of getting them all. For the time being that quest has stopped because as you get into finding more and more it gets harder and harder to find them but the ones that I have so far managed to grow are growing well and are super established. This orchid came to me in one of my first ever shipments of Rapiculus Lelias in 2019 and she took to my climate like the glove that perfectly fits around your hand. She bloomed that is the most important thing and that gives me the opportunity via these two tiny blooms where size is everything because they are just cute and adorable to say thank you to background soothing and marion 
Should something happen in life, my Rapiculus Lelia collection is my plan B because I can move with them anywhere. And the reason I'm telling you this is that is how important these orchids are for me. If I one day have to become an orchid windowsill grower, these little Lelias will always, always find their spot. There's absolutely no doubt how much they mean to me. And because they're so cute, dainty and petite, I say, j'adore. Thank you, background soothing. Thank you, Marion, for your support on my channel. My Rapiculus Lelia, Lelia Regina, she blooms for you. Very pleased to say that Popcorn Haruri is alive and kicking it. <laughs> wow, <laughs> very, very pleased to say that. So let me quickly, before I go into the details of this orchid and we zoom in on these blooms, say thank you to Baby Girl One, Susan Romeo, Rohin Das, Raguram Somanchi, Sugata, Robertos Mayer. My alive and kicking it, Ionopsis Popcorn Haruri, she blooms for you to say thank you to all of you for your support on my channel. Know that you are super, super appreciated. And just because I'm about to go gushing in on about this orchid and updating a little bit, doesn't mean that I don't remember what we're here for. I want to say thank you to you. My Popcorn Haruri is in bloom and she is all yours with this spike because she has another spike coming, but just look at the spike here. Considering how poorly she was very, very early in the season. And yes, I'm still traumatized by that horrible spring because I had never experienced anything like it and neither have my orchids. So if I were to be cheating, I would say this could have been her second blooming within the same year. But the two spikes she was growing during spring were actually stress spikes. And those are not the kind of spikes I want to see. Back then I was already prepared to not let this orchid bloom out if she were to grow a growth and a spike. And yet here she is in bloom and that doesn't mean that I chickened out and I wanted to see her in bloom anyway. No, she is strong enough on the top part to bloom on that growth. Now, she is growing another spike, absolutely, but I doubt I'm gonna let that one bloom because those growths down there are not as big and strong as the one she's currently blooming on. And while I was talking all about this, I hope that you had a beautiful insight into how gorgeously structured this spike is. Love how the branching has stacked on top of each other. And maybe, maybe you've seen a little mutant bloom in and amongst that little bunch of blooms just looks so cute. Yeah, it's like two blooms have fused into one, so you can see there's still a little bit of stress in this orchid, but at least not the kind of stress where I thought, I don't dare let her bloom. But oh my goodness. So this is a little bit later on. We have kind of missed the period of where Popcorn Haruri shows up a little bit yellow before fading into a beautiful baby pink that we see in her early stages of opening the blooms. The lip is on the yellow side, giving a buttery popcorn kind of look. But I do have some images which I will also be including in this clip because gorgeous beyond any kind of expression that I can actually bring out. Sometimes blooms are so easy to yap on about and talk about, whereas my trauma from the spring is still, I'm so relieved that this orchid is still around. So let the pictures speak for themselves while I yap away and talk about the bottom part of my popcorn Haruri, which is also still alive, but definitely the weaker of the two sections. I lost quite a bit through the middle. Not that this orchid was ever in one piece, but there was definitely no gap between the two pieces. So I lost quite a bit. The bottom part is recovering. Thankfully, we have about three or four new growths to speak of down there, thankfully and I still have one little new growth yet to develop and mature. Whew, I think you can hear it in my voice that I'm very grateful that this orchid is still around. She is not fragrant, but oh, who cares? <laughs> the presentation of this year's spike is just gorgeous, and that is why I'm so enthusiastic and happy just to say thank you via my Ionopsis Popcorn Haruri for your support on my channel. Baby Girl One, Susan Romeo, Rohin Das, Raguram Somanchi, Sugata, and Robertos Maya. From the brink to the bloom, she blooms for you. So 
so many spikes, so many blooms. Let me tell you, I counted 12 spikes on my Dendrobium antenatum. I didn't count the blooms. I am not good at that. My eyes go every which way and I completely lose focus. There are many, many blooms on this orchid right now. I couldn't be more pleased. So if you are familiar with my channel, you know I do orchid dedications to say thank you to everybody that comes up on my list, acknowledge their names personally. And when an orchid blooms like this, I am very, very relieved because I can make a massive dent in that list and get to more people quicker. It is gonna be a long list for 12 spikes. I don't know how many blooms. I've got 20 names. If you are so inclined to see if your name has finally come up, thank you very much. And please don't be disappointed if your name hasn't come up. And I also thank you for sticking around, even though for the time being, all I'm gonna do is read names. This is important to me because I can address people and they know that they have been seen and are appreciated. My Dendrobium antenatum this year blooms for Frank C, Danny Hay, Anna Redfield, Love is Blind, Anna Grace, Desiree Grace, Kathy Moser, W. Juanan, Alexandra Dumitru, Jenna Blue, Daniel Natureza, John Chandy, Amelia Skova, Debbie Appleyard, Jesse Davis, El Diablo Manati One, Sugarcane Alyssa, Clean Kitchen, Ruth Kuhne, and 08 Sitlali or 08 Sitlali. Now, thank you to all of you so very, very much for your support on my channel. I say it, I mean it. Even though I don't have a single bloom for every one of you to say thank you to, and I have you all in a list, know that all of you are individuals in my eyes, and I so appreciate your support on my channel. Considering the amount of blooms I have on my antenatum, including a couple down there and some buds yet to open, I could have gone with 30 names, but I decided to keep it to 20, seeing as the blooms as such aren't very, very big. But oh my goodness, am I glad that finally I get to see what this orchid is capable of, because yes, she is a prolific bloomer, but last year I didn't stand a chance against the caterpillars. I was getting to know this orchid and I didn't know that caterpillars enjoyed her as much as I do. And that was frustrating. But here we are, 2022, and I was faster than the caterpillars. These blooms are amazing. This orchid is a species. It is not fussy, except for the fact that it is a warm to hot grower. So in my climate here in southern Spain, it gets too cold for my liking and it gets too cold for this orchid's liking. And that's why I have her in lava rock and self-watering. At least the lava rock doesn't have evaporative cooling. And she seems to have coped super well through my diabolical spring of 2022, or else we wouldn't be seeing what we're seeing now. And given the fact that she is a species, all these put together makes this an amazing orchid because normally species do not perform like this, or they are slower, or they don't do much for most of the year, but not the antenatum. And I cannot even begin to describe the fragrance, but if you've ever had a cochleata or Prostechia cochleata in your collection, something along those lines that has a very heavy fragrance of honey and molasses, very sugary, very sweet, that is the same fragrance, but not as heavy, but strong fragrance, even as the buds form. It is a wonderful sight how the petals are still formed like a little cone protective cage around the lip before they open up. It is beautiful. The formation of the buds like that can last for days, and then the entire blooming can last for weeks, if not up to a couple of months, seeing as I still have some buds to open. Now, I love my white and chartreuse green matched blooms. I think there's something delicate and charming about them. But to have a lip that has a few details to add to the mix, it's just perfection. And finally, I have a day that doesn't have any wind. Because imagine trying to film this spectacle when there's a breeze even. The spikes would be blowing everywhere and it would be difficult to focus on any specific subject about this orchid even all the antennas sticking up finally to attention without distorting the image. It's 
amazing. I am so grateful and I hope that the photography that I took does this justice because it's very difficult to find the fine lines of the bloom when the camera always wants to focus out into the distance. I need me some good images of this orchid and I hope to have achieved that and you've been enjoying some of those. And as I always repeat the names at least twice in a dedication, one more time in case you missed your name the first time. Thank you very, very much to Fran C., Danny Hay, Anna Redfield, Love is Blind, Anna Grace, Desiree Grace, Kathy Moser, W. Juanan, Alexandra Dumitru, Jenna Blue, Daniel Natureza, John Chandy, Amelia Skova, Debbie Appleyard, Jesse Davis, El Diablo Manati 1, Sugarcane Alyssa, Clean Kitchen, Ruth Kuhne and 08 Sitlali or 08 Sitlali. You being on my channel, supporting my channel, whatever it is that you do, watch the videos, like or comment, all of that means a lot. Thank you so much for your support on my channel and I hope that you're all doing well in your part of the world. This is my Violacea variety of Cerula, Phalaenopsis. It's actually her third bloom. Her second bloom didn't even last 24 hours. I don't know what happened there. She was still inside in her normal place, got the second bloom and poof, it was gone the next day. Totally wilted on me. And here we are with a third bloom. She's not presenting herself as nicely, so I'm gonna add some stills from her first ever bloom just so that I can show off the detail a little bit. But what I didn't want to miss out is the opportunity to dedicate this cute, cute little bloom to a very cute little girl. She is the granddaughter of Jose Joseph. So, Jose Joseph, if you see this video, would you please one day show your granddaughter, you know which one I'm talking about, I don't want to mention her name, this is a public platform, but you know who I'm talking about, would you show her this video, and to you, insert name of granddaughter here, thank you so very, very much for watching my videos together with your granddad. It's nice to know that there's someone so young that already likes orchids. And I bet your granddad and you are having a great time on the occasions that you can be in the garden with him enjoying his orchids. He has been telling me a lot about his orchids, which is wonderful. I like hearing those stories. So, little one, when you see this video, know that I think of you. Also know that I appreciate you very, very much. And I hope that you are doing really well. If you are in school, hope that you're studying hard. <laughs> but as you watch this video, you better not be in school. <laughs> anyway, for a cutie, I have a cutie. Phalaenopsis Violacea variety Cerula. She blooms for you. Thank you so much for being so sweet and being so kind and sharing your granddad with me. Oh, and by the way, if you like cinnamon, if you like something like a sweet that has cinnamon in it with lots of sugar on it, this is exactly what this orchid smells like, a sweet cinnamon dessert. It is absolutely delicious, and she smells very, very strong of that delicious fragrance. You don't have to put your nose in it. I'm standing outside. I'm approximately a meter and a half away from the orchid, and she is filling this area, even though it is very, very windy, with that sweet fragrance. So there you go. A cute little bloom, a sweet fragrance. It's the perfect match for a cute little girl with such a sweet heart. Meaning, you're a sweetheart. Thank you very much for showing up in my comments through your grandfather ever so often. Hope you're doing well. And a big, big hug from Spain. I hope that you enjoyed all the blooms and I hope that if your name came up that you enjoyed seeing the bloom that matched your name. While you were busy watching the video, I was busy checking my hibiki blooms because sometimes the mealybugs seem to think that this color suits them and complements them and they like to now hang out in my blooms. That is so not happening. I found a few in this mass of gorgeousness and beauty. They have been dealt with or have they? May need to have another look around. See, they're tucked away in these little bracts. Hibiki is a very long-lasting bloomer, but uh, mealybugs will very, very quickly decimate the blooms. 
which is something I don't want. I want my hibiki around for as long as possible. These beautiful, bright, sunny summer colors. Ha ha ha. Speaking of summer, goodbye summer. Anyway, Hibiki still gives me that vibe. Thank you so very, very much for watching. Your time is appreciated. Your support is appreciated. Hibiki is still in bloom for you. Thank you. I hope you have yourself a beautiful day. On that one condition though, please, that you stay safe. Take care. Bye.